Hey guys, John here. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to create a map generator for like a 2D roguelike tile game, if you will. Um, this is going to introduce a concept called nested for loops, which is often where I think people struggle when creating tile map games. Um, like I said, this is really useful if you're creating like a roguelike 2D game and you want to create um, tile maps randomly generated uh, based off of some width and height value, uh, then this video is going to be really helpful. So here's what I'm going to show you. Uh, this is what we're going to go ahead and create today. We're going to go ahead and create a map generator that's going to take a width and height and it's basically going to create a tile map. Um, and I have just checkered it in just so we could see borders. Um, but what's important to begin with is understanding how a tile map is generated. So you can see here that a tile map here is 2D, right, for a 2D game. So you have an X and Y plane. So what you'll have here is um, this bottom left corner is your first tile. And what that's going to be is your X tile. And what's going to happen then is these tiles draw upwards. So you have an X axis, which are all these guys, and then you have your Y axis. And the way a tile is drawn is like this. It starts at the bottom left and goes up the height, and then it goes to the next um, bottom left, and then it goes up to the height. So here's what that looks like in real time. So if you were to construct this, it goes X up, 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 X up, 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 up. Uh, and basically it just creates the width followed by the height. So it's an XY pattern. This is how you create a map. This is how it's generated in real time. And then here I'm going through with logic to put in the blue squares. So I'm not necessarily going to show you how to do uh, this part. Maybe I can. Maybe I'll give you an exercise to complete that. But what I am going to show you to do is the logic for generating a 2D tile map. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to do all of this from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and clear everything so you guys can't cheat. Um, if you've if you're familiar with my videos, you know I don't spoon feed very often or ever. So let's go ahead and first thing we need to do is we need a tile for our game. So let's go ahead and create a tile. So we're going to go to, uh, let's go ahead and create sprites. And then just go ahead and create a square, name it tile. Go ahead and just put it in the scene. And this is what we're going to work with. So what we need now is we need to turn that into a prefab because we're going to be instantiating this uh, several times to create our map. All right, so now that we have our prefab for a tile, we can go ahead and delete the tile in the scene because now we're going to go ahead and use this prefab. Um, go ahead and create an empty game object in the scene. You can do that by Control Shift N or just create a game object, right click 3D object, or I'm sorry, right click create empty. And what we're going to do is just name that map generator. All right, and go ahead and create a new C sharp script and call that map generator. All right, go ahead and attach that script to the map generator. Now, when we are creating a map generator, or when we're creating any class, a class is like a blueprint, right? So what are the behaviors or the instructions um, for the map generator? What can the map generator do? All right, is really what we need to ask ourselves. So we have this map generator, all right? Now, what are we going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just remove this for now so we have less uh, clutter. So for a map generator, we have, what are we creating? We're creating a map, right? Well, I want to be able to define that map. So I want to be able to define the width and height of that map, right? So those are going to be int values that are going to store the width, and then we're also going to store the height. And we can just set that to default for now. So we have a width and a height, and then what else do we have when we're creating a tile map? Um, we have a width, we have a height, and then we have a tile, right? We need to instantiate that tile. So a tile for us is a game object, and we're going to call it tile prefab or tile fab. All right, so that's going to be our tile, um, tile prefab that we're going to instantiate, and we're going to instantiate it based off of this width and height. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's head back to the inspector. Now let's assume that we were going to create a five by five grid. All right, so the width is five, the height is five. So that's gonna be 25 tiles that we need to create. So let's go ahead and start small. Let's do the first thing. Let's just focus on the width. Let's not even worry about the height. Let's go ahead and just create the width of this program. The first thing we need to figure out is how do I spawn five tiles, 
right? Or based on what if that number was 50? How do I spawn 50? Whatever the width is, I need to spawn that many tiles. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and say, we'll create a method called uh, generate map, All right? So we're going to generate map. When we call that, we're going to run some code that's going to create the map. Now, in order to do this, we need a for loop. Why do we need a for loop? Because we're doing something multiple times, right? If I'm if the width is 50 and I need to create 50 objects for the width, I need a for loop to iterate through and instantiate 50 tiles. So here's how we're going to do this. So we're going to go ahead and say print x equals 0, right? Because we're working on the x-axis for the width, the y-axis for the height. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, x is less than the width then we're going to increment x. Now for each x in this list, or I'm sorry, for each x in this loop, what we need to do is we need to instantiate our tile fab. Now let's just go ahead and save that and check out the result. All right, you go to your map generator. You need to store your tile fab on here. All right, drag your tile on there. And what's going to happen here is we're going to print out, as you can see in the hierarchy, Actually, nothing's going to happen. Sorry, we never actually called that method. <laughs> go ahead and um, create void update. And go ahead and make it so that when you hit the space key, we generate the map. All right, so if you hit the space key, then we're going to go ahead and generate the map. All right, save that, run it, hit the space key. You're going to see that now we have five tiles. Now we have a problem though. They're stacked on top of each other. So let's go ahead and define a position for them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just say here, vector two dot zero, so that they spawn on the origin of the map. And then we're gonna go ahead and say quaternion dot identity. Now when we do this, they're gonna be spawning at zero, zero, zero for the X and zero for the Y. We're gonna get the same result However, now we can at least modify their positions. So what's wrong with this? Right now they're stacked on each other, right? What we'd like is for them to be ideally like this, right? So this is our width. Okay, so what we want is when we hit the space key, our tiles need to be lined up the width like this. So how do we do that? Um, as you can see here, I was incrementing the x by 1. So using that knowledge right there, we can use very simple math to basically create what's called an offset for that position. So let's go ahead and create a variable to store the offset. In this game, it's a 1 because we're using uh, just single unit based tiles. So let's go ahead and just create a variable in here. We'll call it, say, public int, uh, we'll say, offset. Or here, tile offset is more appropriate. Tile offset, and go ahead and set it to 1.0, or 1, just 1. All right, set it to 1. What I want to do now is I don't want to spawn them all at 0. I want to spawn them all. I want to spawn the first one at 0, and then I want to spawn the next one next to it. So how can I do that? Well, I have this indexer, right? So if we spawn the first one, x is 0, and I want that one to be at position 0, but if I spawn the next one, x is now 1, I want that one to be 1 on the x. And this one is now 2. When, when x is 2, I want my x position to be 2. And then eventually, when I get to my fifth uh, tile, x will be 5, and I want uh, the x-axis to be 5. So here's how we can do this. We have our offset, and we can create a position for this tile. And the way we do this, we say new vector 2. And what goes in here? I'm going to go ahead and say x, and then y I don't really care about. I'm just going to say 0 for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if I do this. All right, so we're going to run the game, and I hit space. And now you're going to see that based on the x value of the iteration, that's where it is on the x-axis. Now we created that offset value. Why is that offset value important? What if I wanted my tiles to be a little spaced out from each other? Like for instance, say I wanted them to be, so right now their offset is one and they're just, they're basically um, snapped to each other, they're touching. What if I wanted to give them a little bit of crease in between? So let's go ahead and say my, let's go ahead and change this into a float here. And let's go ahead and say my tile offset is 1.25F. 
So basically, how can I now incorporate this? Um, I could, I guess, say pose equals new vector 2 x, right, which is 0, plus my offset, which is 1.25. But watch what happens when I do that. I don't know if that's the desired result. So if I go ahead and run this with adding the offset, you can see all it did was shifted everything over 1.25 f. I don't want to shift everything. I want to create a crease. So how can we do that? Well, we can use multiplication. What is the first iteration of x? x equals 0, right? And anything times 0 is 0. So that means that on the first round, the first tile has a x of 0 and a y of 0. On the next tile, the x is now 1, 1 times 1.25, and now you have 1.25 for x and 0 for y. And then as it iterates, the same thing will happen. So now, having this offset of 1.25, which I can replace with my tile offset, there will now be a crease within each tile. So go ahead and check this out. And just kidding, why is there no crease? Uh, it looks like it didn't take... Oh, okay, or sorry, our tile offset is still 1 in the inspector. Change that to 1.25. And go ahead and run it. And now we have creases within our tiles because of that offset. So that's going to be really handy if your maps or if you wanted to, you know, differentiate your tiles or create like holes or anything like that. Um, you're going to want to have an offset that you can use. So for our purposes, though, I'm going to go ahead and set the tile offset back to one, and I'm still going to use it just for good practice. Call my games. It stops bugging me. All right. So let's check this out. So we're creating our width, right? Now, what about our y? So we know that the way the, the tile map is drawn is that it draws one x followed by all the y's. So if you have an x, um, an x tile, and then it's going to, and you have a, so say, you're, say you created a 1 by 5 map tile, right? You're going to have 1 on the x and 5 on the y. If it was 2 by 5, you would have 1 on the x, 5 on the y, and then another on the x and 5 on the y, right? So it draws from 1 on the, I'm sorry, I'm basically trying to, describe to you guys how how it's drawn, uh, which is what I showed you in the beginning. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do the height now. So we already instantiate the x position here, right? Let's go ahead and incorporate the y. And the way we do that is we're gonna go ahead and use another for loop for the y. So the way it works is you do one x, and actually here, let me go ahead and draw this out like this, I can. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to do the way it works is we have an x, say we had a 2 by 5 or 2 by 3, okay? So a 2 by 3 looks like this. You have x, and let me go down more. You have an x, and then you have 1, 2, and then you have an x, right? And then you have an x, x. That's a 2 by 3 right there. All right, and the way it gets drawn is you draw an x on the x-axis followed by the height on the y, which is 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay? That's exactly what we're going to do. So for 1x, we do all the height. So here, we do 1x, and now we do the height. So for int y equals 0. While y is less than height, we're going to do all the height and then continue on the x-axis. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say y++. plus plus. And then here, let's just copy this, put that in there. Now we have the x-axis plus the tile offset. Now we're going to do the y plus the tile offset. And now let's go ahead and check out the result. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit the space key. And now we have a 5x5 five five tile, as you can see here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, change it up, see if we can get a different result here. Let's go ahead and do a 3 by 4. And you'll see here when I hit space, we have a 3 by 4 tile. All right, so that's how you create a map and generate it. Now, what I showed you guys before was that I created like checkerboards in it. So every other tile basically um, is a different color. The way I did that was I needed to keep track of the tiles. Um, and if you notice, right now, I have, no I have no references to the tiles, so how can I change their color? Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and actually, uh, I'm going to write out for you guys what you can do if you want to go ahead and create um, that effect of tiling 
each other one blue or something like that. And the way it works is you need to get a reference to this guy. Now, how do you do that? And I'll actually show you how to populate what's called a list. Go check out my advanced tutorial on list. Um, and what you need to do though is you need to get a reference to all the tiles and you need to store them in a list so that you can iterate over each item in the list and turn every other one blue. All right, so it's really simple to get started. Uh, first thing you need is a list to store all your tiles. So you'll create a list of type game object, because that's what your tiles are. And we'll say tiles. And then what you need to do is after you create a tile, store it in this list. Now, question is, how do I store the tile I just created in the list? Well, you need to create a reference to it. And the way you do that is by turning this instantiate into a game object type. So you're going to say game object, and we'll say current tile equals instantiate tile prefab. Now what's going to happen is the, the next tile you spawn is going to be referenced inside this current tile variable. And what you can do now is you can go ahead and access your tiles list and you can add the current tile. And now we have a reference to that tile in the list. Now this is going to be really important. I want to show you guys this. I'm going to have an error here. And this error is very important. Um, this error is because of a typecast, which I'm actually not getting. Why am I not getting that? My stuff safe. Huh. Let me try something. What? Weird. That must be new in um in Unity 5.5. You used to uh you used to have to cast this. Um, usually you'll get an error that says like a conversion, uh, are you missing a conversion or a cast? And basically you just need to tell it that I am instantiating this as a game object. And you can cast it like this, or you can cast it as this and just remove the parentheses ones in the front. So you can do this method, or you can do as game object, and both of them work the exact same. If you go to the scripting reference for instantiate, you'll often see an example that looks just like this. All right, so regardless, let's go ahead and continue. So now I have a list that's populated, and now the rest is pretty much um, self-explanatory. You need to iterate through the tiles and um, turn even tiles blue. Now you're asking yourself, how do I know the even tiles? Well, there's this thing called a modulus operator, which is this percent sign. And the modulus operator says, divide and take the remainder. So for instance, if I was going through an iteration and I have i, say i equals 4, what I could do is I could create an if statement that says if i is modulus 2. So if i, the way you read that is if i divided by 2 with equals 0. And what that means is if i divided by 2 has a remainder of 0, that means it's an even number. What's 2 divided by 2? Uh, it's one, right? There's zero remaining. That means it's an even number. So this is how you can determine if uh, something in your, or this is how you can determine if your index is even. And what you can do is, if that's the case, go ahead and get the renderer component and change the color to blue. All right. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to creating more content soon, and I will see you guys soon.